Good afternoon. I'm a bit twisted. We're gonna be spinning some more linen thread here. Spinning some thin singles. Um, this bobbin here is is got some varying diameters, but all still within a reasonable range. And I just wanted to show the close up of the process, how I do this. So I hang my fiber on my little distaff here and tie it semi tight at the top so it won't slide down but will allow me to pull the fibers through. Now, sometimes it gets a little snug so I stop treadling so I don't over twist and then continue. Um, I don't use totally wet fingers so I spin mostly dry and this this works well in getting reasonably smooth thread without using excessive amounts of water. A um, little bit of saliva on the fingers um, actually helps get some grip but isn't really used to smooth the fibers um, as, a, as what they consider a wet spin. I tend to do my spinning kind of dry and then when I get go to ply, then I ply it wet. I actually run the fiber through uh, a folded sponge that's, that's damp, dampens the fibers and helps further smooth the thread after I've plied it, or as I'm plying it. And that's given me some really good results. So I'm still working on trying to get a good consistent thickness of uh, fiber with my techniques here. And so far it's working pretty good. I'm using my Ashford spinning wheel, a double treadle, and a woolly winder. And the woolly winder helps in that I don't have to stop periodically and change hooks. Gives a nice smooth, even bobbin full of thread, uh, equally distributed across the bobbin. And I can just focus on my drafting and spinning of the fiber and not have to worry about hooks and all that stuff. Um, this fiber is a fiber that I've grown. I grew this flax, processed it, made the fiber out of it, and now spinning for the uh, linen thread. I've made a couple small samples of woven material. And now I'm working on a larger, larger piece of material. I already have some flax that, or some linen thread that's already processed. And I can, once I get done with this, I'm going to do this bobbin and then one more. And then I'll ply it and then I'll take all of what I have and I'm going to put it on the loom. And uh, see what I can make. And do some practicing on the loom. And then I'll work towards making that shirt that I've been promising for a while. So that process is still in the works. Um, I do find out that, that a little bit of saliva on the fingers gives, allows me to grip the thread or the fiber for uh, control of the drafting. Um, some of the fiber is, uh, sticks to itself a little bit more, so it tends to make it a little bit thicker than what I actually want. Um, takes a sec to get it back down to a thinner, 
thread. Um, some of the fiber is actually just thicker, period, from, from the process than other fibers. Some fiber is really fine. Some's a little bit thicker, and when I'm in the really fine stuff, my my size is fairly consistent, but it, it does it does vary. Um, it kind of balances out once I've made my uh, my ply, and then once it's woven, it's it's not so bad either. Um, it does have some inconsistencies, but this is all a learning process. Slow, since I'm not devoted. To, a lot of my time at doing this I have no choice but this is a very called very slow fashion um, so I am hoping to get a shirt out of all this in a reasonable time frame but you know other things get in the way so I'm hoping this will give a good look at the process close up and then we'll put another lens on this camera and zoom out and get a little bit wider picture of the process I was even doing doing it this way earlier where I'm just one-handed, but then I get to a thick spot. So I end up keeping my hand to control it. Um, so and also that thicker spot there tends to be what I call lint. And it makes little blebs. Um, Lint, like all other lint, eventually washes out and smooths out over time after your finished um, fabric is made. It's just lint, small, short fibers um, that don't hold together really well over time. Um, it's kind of like cotton. That's why cotton wears out so quickly because the fibers are so short. They tend to break down faster. All righty. And some of the little flyaways that I still get, um, those tend to get wound into the ply when I ply it so so my threads are are quite smooth by the time I put them on the loom and I have not done anything with sizing either on the loom just gives a good close up It's a little dampness to them here. Um, saliva makes it stickier than just plain water. Plain water doesn't make things super sticky. So we'll go to the next, next part of this here in just a minute. And then I can just stop and just leave it. And then we can show you with my gauge that my thickness is in the lace weight range right here. So now we're at a little bit wider angle here and I do spin at a uh, on a counterclockwise.
My fiber is pretty long, but I don't pull too much. And my thread remains pretty strong. As long as you don't pull too much. You want to have good overlap between all your threads. Here all your fibers here to your threads. Uptake is good. So adjustment's good. This is a Scotch tension setup. This is not a double drive setup. Um, I chose this wheel over the other because of the flyer. Uh, don't have a woolly winder for the other wheel. Uh, it's not made for that kind of a wheel. I do believe they have woolly winders for, for uh, double drives. But not that I sh am sure that I could adapt to my wheel. So and again, a little bit of a little bit of saliva on the fingers gives some grip to help pull the fiber from the bundle. Sometimes I counter counter rotate. The fiber a little bit because I do let the fiber go up into the or the twist go up into the fiber a little bit and helps grab other fibers next to it. So I just make a nice long continuous thread. And then when I do break or need to fix a boo-boo. Um, I pull a long piece of thread that I've just spun to blend in with the with the new when I splice it together. Don't want short splices with this stuff. And you definitely want to do your splices uh, wet, um, spit wet, because it helps make it stick better and um, and I have my distaff as low as I can go right now so I can't lower anything as my fiber bundle gets shorter and shorter so it pulls all the long fibers out first and then leaves the shorter ones as I slowly progress up the fiber bundle then I'll just grab some some of the longer stuff and I'll slowly start integrating so you can see it's kind of thick right here and I don't want that. So I'll pull that, I'll back pedal a little bit, stick that up there, get my fingers good and wet, get a good spin started. Let the last piece pick up some fresh fiber, and then I just continue just like there was no break. And it works just like that. Pretty slick. And I can just stop at any time. And periodically, I'll use my thread gauge. And again, I'm still in that lace weight range, and that's what I want. And then I'll apply it, make it a little bit thicker for weaving. There you have it.